Good morning guys. I want to demonstrate how to diagnose an easy go golf cart. And this also applies to most cl club cars as well. Most of everything that I'm going to demonstrate here. So this is an easy go. You can see um, it's just a regular easy go. I think they're going to call this one a TXT. But again, the same. most of what I'm going to show you here applies to pretty much any golf cart. So, um, I think when I think the biggest thing that you need to understand when you're diagnosing electrical problems is there are things that can go wrong and then there are things that most likely are going to go wrong and you want to start with the things that are most likely to go wrong typically that will be moving things anything that moves anything that's exposed to corrosion those are the things that are likely to go wrong first solid state things you want to check them last things that are mechanically controlled are things you want to check first so um, when it comes to golf carts the biggest thing you want to check is these terminals on the battery you want to just take your finger here It'd be probably better to wear gloves because sometimes there can be battery acid here but since I'm using a camera I don't have gloves on because I'm having to control the camera as well but you can just feel these wires here they're supposed to be pretty tight you want them to be tight if they're loose that's not good that one is getting a little loose when they get loose basically it means the eyelet is starting to corrode so much that it has worn thin and it's going to break off so you just want to go to each one of these and just check them this is a six volt battery each one of these batteries is six volts to make a combined 36 volts after you've checked the terminals you want to check the voltage of the battery now, I'm not using a load tester right now. You do really want to load test these batteries because you can have no, what they call nominal voltage, and that doesn't really mean anything. But we're still just going to do nominal voltage. Nominal voltage on this battery is 5.9. That's within the acceptable range because these are 6-volt batteries, and that's really close to 6 volts. If it gets down to 4 volts, that's where you know you have a problem. So that, that 4 volts will indicate that you have probably a bad cell or the battery is seriously discharged right here all we, we're doing is just checking each one of these batteries just to see if they are pretty close and you can see how every one of them are you know are really close to six volts which basically means they need charging but they probably are not bad they're very at the, they're very much at the end of their life though so you just keep checking all this and then when, when you get over here you see boom look at that this wire is loose and that wire is loose and this one is really getting loose so this could be your problem because if you notice this white wire, if you trace it over here, guess where it goes? It goes to the charging plug. If the charge, so basically this has a proximity sensor in there. If the charger plug is in here, then it tells the computer over here not to allow the golf cart to drive. And since this wire from the charging port is broken over here, chances are that may be all wrong with this golf cart. This wire has corroded. And has broken off so i'm gonna replace that i have no idea this is my first time looking at this golf cart this morning i have not already pre-diagnosed anything for you guys but i just want you to check these terminals these ter terminals are notorious for corroding up and breaking off it doesn't mean the battery is bad because you have corrosion some brand batteries are worse about accumulating corrosion around the post some batteries are better about being better sealed we typically use crown batteries and crown batteries tend to leak less than maybe like a duracell battery or even trojan batteries so that's something to consider also when you take these caps off if you look down in here sometimes people overfill these with distilled water if you overfill these batteries then when you charge them they will overflow and it'll create a lot of condensation on the top and that condensation is acidic and corrosive and it causes these terminals to accumulate a lot more of this they're going to have some on there anyway pretty much any battery is going to accumulate some corrosion after a period of time but this is excessive corrosion and it's mostly likely due to just this brand battery some batteries are not very well sealed here so what we're going to do is replace all of these terminals 
We're going to replace all of these battery wire terminals. We're going to put new ones on. We're going to clean the battery post on each one of these. No, we do not use Coca-Cola. What we do is we take water and we wet the batteries. And then we'll use a wire whisk or a wire brush on a drill. And we will just clean those individually. We put water on them just to keep the dust from that corrosion from just going up into the air and, and, and us breathing that through our nostrils it's not it's, it's very acerbic it actually you can actually feel it burning your back of your throat or your mouth or your nose when you if you breathe that green thing it's toxic you do not want to breathe that and so we wet it down you don't want to get water on any of these components here but you just want to put water on here just to try to keep the dust down so that when you use the wire wheel you do not inhale that corrosive, corrosive um, material there. So that's what we are going to do. We're going to start there. You always need a platform to start with. And we see this wire is broke, so we need to start there first. Now, I'm going to go ahead on and say this in the video. If I put this on and it still doesn't work, which, you know what, I'm, if, if I could hold the camera. Let me see. We're actually going to try this. Let's, let's see if we can do this. We're going to make sure the key is on, the key switch is on. And then we're going to press this pedal and I'm just I'm just going to hold this wire terminal on here and just see if it tries to go. That's it. It tried to go. That's literally all wrong with this golf cart. So the guy brought it in. He didn't know what was wrong. That's literally all that's wrong with it. But that's not all we're going to do. Again, there's lots of corrosion. We're going to replace these wires. We may replace the batteries because the batteries are 2016 and so they pretty much are on the end of their life cycle. You may say, how do I know they're 2016? I don't know the camera shows it very well, but if you see this yellow sticker, it says 816. So, and it's 2022. So you add four to two, it's six years old. That's the lifespan of these batteries. You're, you're usually not going to get much more than six years. The fact that they are six years old means they've been pretty decent batteries, but I think he's probably going to want new batteries in this. If you can look over here, this is the speed controller. This is a 36 volt speed controller. I'm just going to give you some things that I've seen go wrong before. We know that this is the only problem on this cart, but something that typically does go wrong on these golf carts is this plug here. Sometimes I notice that it doesn't get a good connection. If it's not getting a very strong connection, it can arc inside of there and there can and that can cause some issues as well. You just want to make sure all these are strong. They say a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And if you look right here, you see these ginormous cable links on this. This is like one gauge. I don't even know what gauge this is. Like this is huge. Um this is so much bigger than this. And so the current that flows from here goes to here there's really no reason for this to be bigger or smaller than this actually if one was bigger it might be better for those on the battery to be bigger but you know someone just is using the wrong cable there's no reason to use such huge cables the bigger the cable the better so we're not complaining there we do have a 36 volt solenoid as well here these tend to go bad so in order to test this solenoid, what I do is if, suppose I connected that wire and, and there was still no output, what I would do is short these across here. You may see it arc when you do that and then press the pedal. If it drives when you short this out, then chances are this is internally not doing what it's supposed to do because that's all this does. All this does is 36 volts enter here and when 36 volts enter there, there's a... Um, magnetic contactor that closes and it produces continuity between these two so you can literally arc these out it's not going to hurt anything again you will get a sparks on some of them but that's not going to hurt anything you just if you if you if it does spark just try not to arc on those threads because then you won't be able to remove the nut because if you arc the threads then it'll slightly damage the threads and then you may have difficulty removing that nut so if you arc anything you want to arc maybe right here and maybe on the side of the nut somewhere um but just be careful not to touch anything else more than that kind of it's kind of complicated don't sue me if you catch something fire because you can catch something on fire by doing this if you're not careful and then i'm going to show you this let's see if we can hopefully the camera doesn't distort this view here so this is called the forward and reverse mechanism this is a mechanical mechanism it's not 
a solid state solid state mechanisms are far more reliable i'm not a fan of this at all it uses and, I, and I'm, I'm real my camera work is not really that great but this composite material i've seen so many of these melt down and if this melts down and i'm just trying to get the camera in here as, as, as well as i can if you can see this this nut here and then there's a nut behind it if you look behind that nut and just look at this board, this whole plastic composite board, sometimes these boards will melt between that nut and the other side. If it melts, this stud right here will go over to the side and then it won't be making contact with, so we can go around this side just so you can see. It's really hard to show it with the camera. I will have to do a separate video where I have one of these removed. But there's an, a, a, if you look down in here, there's a gold colored, let's see if we can show it to you. You see the gold colored down in there? It's like a copper gold colored terminal. That makes contact with this other side. And so if it melts down, it won't be making solid contact and you will be getting issues with this. So this is something I'll always check and you just want to make sure there is that it's not melting down in here. And then, so anyway, after I put this on, I'm going to clean all these terminals. I'm going to replace all of them. And then I'm going to do a load test. This is something a lot of people who work on golf carts do not do. I will literally drive it up some hills for like five minutes. And then I will use my bare hands. And I will, I will usually grab the center of the wire first. If the center of the wire is cool, then I'll grab the edge of the wire. And you want to find out, are any of these overheating? If they have, it's normal to have a little warmth on some of them every now and then. But if they're hot, if you can barely keep your hand on them, then they're too hot. They're not supposed to get too hot to keep your hand on. A little bit of warmth, like maybe if they're the same temperature as your hand, 9,500 degrees, that may be an acceptable level. But anything more than that means it's getting too hot. Same way down here. Very important on this board. Again, I spoke about this board melting down. So you want to just take your hand and touch these. Be really careful because they could be really hot and it can literally scald your finger. So that's typically why I grab them like a long ways away from the end. If it's cool there, then you can move your hand up closer and just touch these. See if they're hot. If they're hot, you're going to have to replace either the whole wire or you have to replace just the terminal. So um, it depends on how bad the terminal looks. If the terminal looks really well, but it's still hot, then sometimes the sheathing in the wire can have corrosion all the way down through the wire. And you may have to replace the entire wire lead. You do not want any heat on these wires. That's really the key. You want to keep everything as cool as possible. If, if everything feels cool to touch, that's ideally where you want to be. Again, it's, it's normal for some of these wires to get a little warm. Just slightly warm, but nothing more than just slightly warm, like lukewarm. Nothing more than that. So that's that's it for now, guys. A lot of people get up here and they start digging key switches out. I'm going to tell you something. Key switches almost never go out. And that's true for almost all machinery. If you always think, oh, it's the key switch. Now, there are some bad key switches, but in the line of work that I do, I replace all electronic components, all components. Key switches are at the very bottom of the list. They are one of the most reliable components on pretty much any type of machinery that I work on. Again, certain Polaris's have bad key switches. I understand there's certain machineries that do have bad key switches. Some of the Toro Z-Turns, they have bad key switches. But on golf carts, man, out of... um trying to think here out of maybe 500 golf carts we may have replaced one key switch it's incredibly rare so that's what this video is about this video is about informing you not necessarily what is wrong but what to check first what to check first what most so um i just want you to understand that what li most likely will go wrong because so again a lot of things can go wrong anything can go wrong on here but what is the failure rate of these components? And the failure rate of key switches is very, very low. The failure rate of that forward and reverse mechanism that I talked about, very, very high. And then again, the uh, this uh, most people go straight to this controller and they're like, okay, that's bad. The failure rate on that, um, 
that uh, I would say that right there goes bad. Like if, if all these wire terminals were fine and the batteries tested fine and this forward and reverse control checked fine, then I would check the solenoid, make sure it's actually working. And that if that checks fine, then I would check the foot pedal mechanism. There's a micro switch that controls that. If all those check fine, then that's when you start assuming this is fine. This is like the very last thing you want to assume is bad. Um, that that particular control module is, I'd have to go check the price, but it's probably close to three or $400. So you might can find some for 250, but that's something you want to assume is bad last behind the motor. And the motor is like the very last thing. Really the only thing that goes wrong with the motor is sometimes the brushes will get stuck. So that's it for now. I will maybe do a second segment to demonstrate more.